Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin. Esselatu vesselamu Rasuluhu Kerim. Sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem. Amin bak. All the praise belongs to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Highly glorifies he above all things. We witness to God as one, having no associates or partners. He is Allah alone. Nothing is like unto him. The prayers and the peace be upon the honorable and noble messenger of Allah, Muhammad. The prayers and peace be upon him. He is Allah's servant and messenger and a mercy to all of humanity and all that will follow of that traditional salute to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and the peace be upon him. We greet you. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. Praise be to God. We ask Allah to guide our words in this Khutbah lecture, that our niyyah is to give good and nothing but good. Inshallah, God willing. We hope that those who may be visiting us here today at this historical Masjid Mahum Shabazz in the great village of Harlem, that know that our intent is to give good and nothing but good. So if you believe you're hearing something other than that, and know that we don't intend that. I want to start by reading from Surah 22, the Revelation, our holy book. Allah's words, revelation given to Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and peace be upon him, which is entitled Al-Hajj. And just a few ayahs or verses that in my pondering on the world today and all the things that are happening that these ayats after making dua and I open the Quran as I often do begging for guidance uh, I open to this section. This is a translation from the original language of the Arabic, the language in which the Quran was revealed in to our Prophet, with an Abdullah Yusuf Ali translation into English. To those against whom war is made, permission is given to fight because they are wronged. And verily, Allah is most powerful for their aid. They are those who have been expelled from their homes in defiance of right for no cause except that they say our Lord is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Had not Allah checked one set of people by means of another there would surely have been pulled down monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques in which the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commemorated in abundant measure. Allah highly glorifies he above all things will certainly aid those who aid his cause. For verily Allah is full of strength.
exalted in might, able to enforce his will. They are those who, if we establish them in the land, establish regular prayer, and give regular charity, enjoin the right and forbid wrong. With Allah rests the end and decision of all affairs. If they treat thy mission as false, so did the peoples before them with their prophets. The people of Noah, the Ad and the Talmud, those of Ibrahim, Abraham, and Lot, Halut, and the companions of the Maryam people. And Moses or Musa was rejected in the same way. But I granted respite to the unbelievers. And only after that did I punish them. But how terrible was my rejection of them. How many populations have we destroyed which were given to wrongdoing? They tumble down on their roofs. And how many wells are lying idle and neglected and castles lofty and well built? Do they not travel through the land so that their hearts and minds may thus learn wisdom and their ears may thus learn to hear? Truly, it is not their eyes that are blind, but their hearts which are in their breasts. Yet they ask thee to hasten on the punishment. But Allah will not fail in his promise. Verily a day in the sight of thy Lord is like a thousand years on your reckoning. And to how many populations did I give respite which were given to wrongdoing. In the end, I punish them. To me is the destination of all. Salak Allah Azim. Allah speaks the truth. We are living in a time, as I've heard, the man who has brought this sacred and holy book, God's words to us here in America, named Imam W.D. Muhammad. May God be pleased with him and continue to grant his noble and honorable work as a follower of Muhammad, the prophet, the prayers and peace be upon him. Grant him, his mother and father, and all those great believers, men and women, who had went before. We're blessed and that we're living in this special time, as he has said, living in the time of the conclusion of things. Not the conclusion of the earth, the moon, the stars, the sun, not the conclusion of the oceans and all the fish that dwell in the seas, not the conclusion of the trees, those who give shade and those who give food, not the conclusion of man, kind, created in the soul and noble way in which God created us, but the conclusion of the influence 
of Satan or Shaitan, a diabolical and wicked mind that has committed his existence to influencing the innocent soul to behave in a way that it was never created to behave. So we're living in the time of the concluding of that. And we see that unfolding in front of us in which we cannot reason and give logical explanation as to why the behavior that mankind created it out of noble germs had took up a foreign substance influenced his very soul to work against the innocence of his soul. So Moses, or Mushar and Aaron, Arum, were not the same height either. One was five feet and the other was six feet. But they both were in the same ascension that we are aware of, that's in our book, The Ascension of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, the prayers and peace before him. They were in the same light beam going up to God. A proof that I am right. I'm coming from Imam W.D. Muhammad. There are many proofs. I gave you some proofs already. In the Bible, Aaron Arum, throws the rod for Musa or Moses in the contests with the high priests or priests. In our holy book, the Quran, it's the same. But read the whole Quran. In another place, Moses or Musa, alayhi salam, throws the rod by himself. There is no Aaron with him. Arun. The Holy Quran also has Musa or Moses throwing the rod, not somebody else. Not Aaron or Harun, peace be upon both of them. So how is he able to throw the rod at this point? A question to us. It is because his brother, Arum or Aaron, has now become Musa or Moses. There is no more two. It is only one Moses. The light of Aaron has merged and disappeared in the light of Moses or Musa and came into one beam in him. The man is much wiser now. What is it saying? What it is saying is that, yes, he needed help in the early stages of his life. But eventually, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala educated Musa or Moses. He did not need Aaron. He threw the rod by himself. Now it seems like it is one occasion, a big occasion where they meet. No, this challenge is all the time. It's all through the life of Musa or Moses. Pharaoh, his witchcraft producers, they are following him. So he has to keep throwing the rod. He has to keep manifesting his superior knowledge of their culture. That is what the rod is, that's what it represents. Allah SWT, to Allah, he asked him, this is Musa, Moses, God is asking, what is that? What 
do you do with that? Referring to his rod, his staff. And he answers, he said, Oh, I use it to support, to support me when I am walking, and I use it to beat back the bush from the path, end of quote. This shows he had knowledge of the culture. We have to meet the challenge. We have, yes, we have to meet the challenge of all the time, too. That's the challenge of the culture. We have to meet the challenge of darkness, superstition, witchcraft, all the time and beat back the darkness just as Musa or Moses did, alayhi salam. In our holy book, the Quran, the wise man Moses had to follow when he found the junction of the two seas after retra retracing his steps is also in Moses. But Moses could not keep company with his own light of wisdom. He could only go so far, and he would lose it. He would lose the ability to keep up with it. Before he knew anything, he would have to say, quote, I missed something, end of quote. Really, the place for charity is the soul. Allah SWT Allah created the soul. Nobody else did. The original soul. So it seems as though we are in the world when we are reading the Quran and reading history. That is true. But the real focus for what is going on, all the history, Wars and everything is the human soul. It is as looking, it is as a looking glass in which you see all of these things. I don't know if it is called a looking glass. It is more precisely called a crystal ball. It is as a crystal ball in which we see the whole world in its stages and what is going on. And really, you cannot see it until you first see the order of the soul or the nature of the soul. When you see the nature of human soul, then you can understand what is going on in the world. This is also philosophy. But everything we have in this world, buildings and everything, I don't care how big or how small the station, the mission, or program going out in space looking for possible life out there, everything is an expression of the soul. The soul acts for that, and if mankind had not made it with woman, and had children by her, he would be still sitting up under a tree whistling Dixie or smoking in the wilderness. Nothing created. But when they mate, then the woman reproduces for the man and reproducing for him makes him more serious gives him something to work for, a future. Gives him a future to work for and gives him a bigger interest. So now he needs more. So he begins to seek more. And she is like a metaphor or a sign of the original soul. From one soul he made two. And what is the grammatical gender of the soul? Speaking about when you refer to the soul, the nephilim, where they're in the 
Arabic, uh, original Arabic in the Quranic language. It is feminine, not masculine. From one, he made two, which means the order and nature of the soul is personified by the woman more than by the man. But when we engage her to produce or have his future with her, then her nature covers his nature. Though his nature still leads her nature, he is the leader, but her nature covers his nature. When I say cover, I mean influences. And he becomes like her in his soul. He was not even aware of his soul before. But now she has made him aware of his soul. And she has made him have a sensitive soul. So that is feminine. She has made him a sensitive soul. So they become two. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reproduces from them all the men and women on earth. Takbir. So it is the soul that begins the building of man's world. The soul begins expressing it. I want a building. I want a road. That is the soul asking for that before the mind asks for it. So when Allah SWT says in the scriptures, the holy scriptures, quote, to have comfort in her or in it, that is the soul. The soul is what is going to comfort. It wants peace. It wants comfort. And we think it stops. It never stops. It keeps requesting. It keeps making requisition. Quote, put me up a road, put me up a city. That is that woman, is it not? Now when trouble comes in, she looks to the man. Quote, put out those fires, man. Put out those fires. What is wrong with you? You're going to let everything burn up? You are going to let our whole investment, all of it, burn up? He made the man and he was lonesome, alone. And Allah, God, did not like that the man should be alone or lonesome. This is coming from scriptures. So he made for him a mate. Noun, before he made for him a mate, what had he done? Nothing. He was not asleep either unless he was sleepwalking. And I think we got a lot of sleepwalkers around here today. Tuck beer. Wake up. The answers to what we're looking for to address and solve are in this scriptures, in this revelation given to the prophet. But who will take it up? Who will pick up the banner of Muhammad, the prayers and peace upon him? Who will pick up his way rather than the way of the highways? Who's going to do that? The trouble we've seen in the world today Oh, Imam, we think it's, it's the trouble because of shaitan, Satan. The diabolical scheme of the wicked one who said that he's going to come from every side of the human man, of mankind, and, uh, and, and, and show that he is not worthy. Yeah, he made that statement. But we're also told the statement he made is he has no power to execute it. So anyone else who may 
have a more connect, important connection to the apparatus. It, was, it came on time, really. Because I said Satan has no power to execute it unless you give it to him. Come to the law. Unless you give yourself to him. He's got no authority. This is the law. It's what Allah telling us. He got no authority. So is Satan really the problem? Or are we who say we believe the problem? The test is on us. Satan has made his statement. He has given his intent on what he's going to do in believing that he's helping his Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the time we're living in, he might just have a point. Because what we see happening is the influence of his beckoning and mankind submitting to it. Submitting to his beckoning. And not listening to the picture that God said he has made, created man, but he, he appears to be alone and shouldn't be alone and created a, a mate that will comfort his soul and she will comfort him and he will comfort her. What's missing in this picture of all the horrors that's going into the world? It's coming from man sleepwalking. Instead of respecting the influence of his mate, who has the sensitivities, who uh, the animal kingdom shows us the commitment of the mate and its protection of the soul and influence. All in our book, all demonstrated in the life of the prophet, the prayers and peace be upon him. The answers are not far off for the savagery that we see going on in this world today. And it's not just in Palestine and Israel. It's all over the world. It's everywhere now. Technology is shining the light on this diabolical behavior of choice by the most highest creation that God has made, mankind, that you are choosing Satan has no authority over you. I repeat what the book tells us, that he has no authority over you and I except what we hand to him. So that means what? We could be finished with him, colossus, if we stopped giving it to him. Be no more killing of babies and wars and such if we stop giving in to his invite, his influence. That's all you got to do is a Christian, I think, says, well, rebuke the devil. Where is he? Well, see how your behavior is, and you will see with influence, you're picking up his tool to solve a God problem. God meaning, in this case, you're guarding in, you've been given the trust, you and I, we have been given the trust of the world and the universe. Allah has trusted us. And God in his mercy did not leave us alone. He has given us one who was living this book before the book was revealed. Takbir. Muhammad the prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this book could not come until Muhammad was born and brought into existence. There had to be one demonstrating it. Living it already for a lifetime as the book witnesses. Allah said, and we witness that you have lived what we're going to give in the final revelation. You have proven that man does not and will not in his original nature accept the workings of Satan. You rebuted it. You rejected him on every turn. Takbir. We want to end this savagery for man, inhumanity to man. Then go to his mate, whose sensitivity is such. Go to the women who are caught up in war, all of them. 
everywhere, who's caught up on the dictators and such a, go to her. You got what God is saying. Go to her. Go to mommy. Go to your mother. And your mother will stand up with courage that most men don't show. Not be here. And your mother, your mommy, your wife, the soul that is activated by the feminine myth is in you. Every creature in this world, but the highest is us, we all come from a mother. Is there anybody in here of my voice that did not come from a mother? <coughs> Thank you. Dr. Bia? Ma, help me. Grandma, help me. Give me that loving care that I need to stand. And you stand and tell the men in the world, in the White House, in the Israeli Knesset, Knesset, however they say it, in Palestine, in France, Germany, Russia, in all the Latin countries, in Africa, anywhere. Ma, go tell that boy to sit down and do what you told him to do to preserve life, to protect life. Tell him to build a community that is worthy of worshiping God in it. Talk me here. You silenced a woman. Huh? I'm hearing this in the Torah Islam. Silence the woman. Don't teach her or so and so. You ain't got to teach her. God has already taught her how to put you in check. Praise be to Allah. Yes, mothers, stand up. Stand up in your human essence, in your human dignity. Not as a Jewish woman, ethnically group and what have you. Not as an Arab woman. Not as a, a woman of the, the Spanish or speaking Latin language or Africa. Not as a woman in your culture identity. But stand up as a woman created by God, the Almighty. Stand in that essence. And no man can stand against you. You're protected by Almighty God. Tuck me here. You stand. Palestinian woman, Jewish woman, African woman, Chinese woman, Korean woman, uh, uh, the uh, people on the equator, uh, South Africa, everywhere. Woman, stand up. You the wound of man. Man can't get here without you. God made it that way. After creating the first, no, 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 no. You are not going to be able to make it on your own. I need an encourager on the soul I put in you. So I'm creating another soul that will encourage you to do what is right and good and just. President Biden, his wife, I'm asking you, talk to your husband. He's on the wrong side of history. I understand the politics of it. He's on the wrong side of history. You speak to him. The Palestinian leaders, listen to your woman. She is the one bearing the pain. The demonstration, she bears it. You and I don't know that pain. We come through it without knowing nothing. The Israeli prime minister, where is your mother? I want to talk to your mother because you are misbehaving in a most diabolical way. Egypt, Saudi Arabia, all of them, Yemen's, all of y'all have lost your mother's soul since. Who are you, brother? I'm a plumber, born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Not influenced by all these other things. I've gotten the book of God as pure as any person could get it, as my prophet received it. I'm innocent. Talk me here. You think it's me talking? It ain't me talking. There's a soul here that's deep in here 
who has lived as though he lived 1,400 years ago and more. As I read the last month, all I says, one uh, a thousand or so years, whatever it is, and your lifetime is not even a flickering in the time of God. Stop the suffering. So you mothers who are in charge, you wives who are in charge, bring some sense. And tell them to cease this. It makes no sense. It's nothing but a bunch of nonsense. Man has lost his way. The Bible speaks of Esau and Miriam, Jesus the Christ. Peace be upon him and his mother Mary, the spirit and the word of God. The Bible speaks of Esau and Miriam as a word, and it says he was existing before the foundation of the world. That is to be understood in several ways. But one clear way is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that the world of mankind, the world we live in, it should conform to the plan of Almighty God. And God's plan is for the ideal human being. It is not for every human being. It is only for the ideal human being. The ideal human being is man in his created excellence, the best moral life and the best rational life with all of the talents and possibilities for him in a real world. Esau, Evan, Miriam, Jesus of Christ is a sign of that, and Muhammad, the prophet, the prayers, and peace be upon him, is the proof of that, not just a sign. Takbir. Alhamdulillah, 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 alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. This is a great time in the winds of change, in the winds of corrections or blowing. Jesus the Christ, peace upon him, does not represent the only one who comes to tell the world, quote, stop doing wrong. Stop mistreating the weak people. Start loving each other. Start helping the little guy. Come to the rescue of the weak and the suffering people. You know, quote of Esau and Miriam, Jesus the Christ. That's not the only Jesus. In fact, that Jesus is not a big deal because we have those people all of the time in society, women and men, who love to do good. And if they see wrong, they want to tell you, don't do that. Don't be like that. Help that person. Don't treat him like that, end of quote. They will stop what they are doing and come away from what they are doing. Maybe they were going to an important meeting or something. They will actually stop, just like the Good Samaritan, in fact, that speaks more to support what I'm saying than anything I can say to you. Again, I'm coming from Imam W.D. Muhammad. May Allah continue to bless him for blessing us and guiding us to this Quran and the life of the Prophet in such a way that our lives have been returned to its original form, original nature. Allahu Akbar. Esau and Miriam of Jesus of Christ pointed to a man who was already doing what he should be doing. He said to the rabbits, rabbis, meaning rabbit, rabbits means the religious leaders. He said to them, all have walked down that same road. And there was a man lying in the road suffering. They just walked around him. 
And it was says, and it says, some walked on the other side of the street or on the other side of the road. So they would not be bothered, would not have their conscience bothered by him. Some did not have a conscience at all. They would stay on the same side of the road, walk right by him and doing nothing for him, and he's suffering in the road. Jesus the Christ, peace be upon him, said, Along came the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan came and had compassion on him. The word Samaritan is from the word Samar, Samar. The place called Samar. This is the name of a place. He was named after a place, a city, or an area. Like you would say, along came the Chicagoans, something of that nature. Or along came the New Yorker. That is how Jesus Christ was speaking. He meant a person who came from another town. He saw him, had compassion on him. And he took him and gave him help. He had to keep going because he, the Samaritan, had a destiny. He had a job, too. He went and found somebody. He went to a rescue place, and he said, quote, Take care of this man. When I return, I will pay you, end of quote. Dear believers, this is really deep. What this is saying is really deep and compared to what's going on right now in this world of ours. First, it is saying that the world that Jesus Christ came into, it was unconscious, filled with people who had lost their original nature, pure and innocent moral sensitivities, and they were just seeing suffering and passing by with no attention to it at all. Is this not the time we're living in right now? The attitude? The attitude that for 75 years, the oppression of the Palestinian people was going on? Ain't that an attitude? 75 years, 1948. But they are, they are a sign of continuous sign of that same attitude that the masses who see it don't say anything, won't speak to it, walk past it. As a country, America, our leadership have been walking past this for 75 years. Europeans, Europe, all over Europe, France, Britain, all of them, everywhere, those who claim leadership, those who claim that they are the voice of the world, have walked past as though they didn't see it. As the thing says, Samaritan, the other ones walked across the street. Some walked right in front of them, didn't care. This is clear that this is the time we're living in. Yes, thank God for Imam W.D. Muhammad, his mother and father. Alhamdulillah. Yes, unconscious, filled with people who had lost their original, original, pure, and innocent moral sensitivity, and they were just seeing suffering and passing by with no attention to it at all. Here comes this man from Samar, a different area. He comes through their area and has compassion on the suffering person in the road. That is what it is saying on the surface. But what it is also saying, because... It says he promised that he was coming back. It is saying that same nature, that same moral makeup is in Jesus the Christ, but he's using another figure to point to something that is in him. He is teaching and using another figure, but he is the one teaching. He is the one who is trying to change things, but he he points to another figure. Goodness is not yours. It is put in you from Almighty God. Takbir. Oh, 
He is also saying that he is also saying that we'll miss most of the educated in religion. What he is saying, most of the educated in religion will miss it. He is saying your goodness is not originally your goodness. Your goodness is divine goodness. It was put in you from almighty God. So he can guarantee that you're going to get help because it is not him alone who is doing this. He is an instrument. This is referring to Esau and Mary and Jesus Christ, what he's saying, given the clear interpretation. The good Samaritan is the instrument of God. The Islamic teachings or sciences says that the whole human family with all of our abilities and all of our tools are like nothing but one hand of Almighty God. Allahu Akbar. God has one hand doing things and the whole human race is nothing but like one hand. It says he has another hand that is taking care of the non-human creation, stars, planet, earth, and all of the material inanimate and animate living things. He is taking care of all of that with one hand, and he is taking care of human life and human affairs with his other hand. You are, act, you are acting just as his hand. All of us together represent nothing but his one hand. Is not that something. It is a description given in a metaphor. This is a description that's given in a metaphor using pictures to teach us because Almighty God has no hands like we have. If you put all human beings together, they don't look like that hand. They look like millions of human beings. <clears throat> but that is God's hand according to that teaching, which is to tell us that just like we use one hand, God uses the whole human family, all human beings, just like we use one hand. And that would be our right hand because human beings uh, building things and, and doing delicate work, healing, operations, performing surgery. So that must be his right hand. But look at what Allah, Allah says in another place in the scriptures. He says, he says to Satan, Shaitan, the devil, the wicked-minded people, the diabolical schemers, the dictators, the oppressors. I'm adding all this into what Imam is saying so we can make this message clear. He says, why do you not accept my special human that I made with my two hands? That's in a quote, another part in the scriptures. And in one place he says, all of the human world is just like his one hand. But in another place he says, when he was making his certain special human being, he used both of his hands, both the inanimate and the natural world and conscious human life. He used both the conscious human life and the inanimate world, all of the material world. He brought them together and reconciled their purpose in the mind of his special creation or creature so that the human being would use this creation as it should be used to benefit all human beings. Allahu Akbar. Is it not wonderful? What I have said, I am not speaking for myself. I'm speaking from my knowledge of the Quran, the Bible, and everything. Imam W.D. Muhammad. Takbir. 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 Dear believers, we've been charged with a task that's not that big. The task is not that big because we have the knowledge. If we didn't have the knowledge, you didn't know, it maybe, maybe it would be a little uh, problem. But it's not because we know. We know what's right and what's wrong. And it ain't by us making a decision. In terms of that, our soul tells us what's right and wrong. 
But you can accept another influence that will go against your very nature. The influence calls you, and you know it's wrong, but you get weak because you're not practicing being the believer. Being a believer takes practice. You have to keep at it. What do you think we got five daily prayers for? Why do you think we got all the sooner prayers? Why do you think we got the vicar to God all the time? Because you need support. You need, you need a situation to meet the challenges. Because Satan is in the world. And he's not an easy person to find either. You don't catch him like that. He's intelligent. He ain't stupid. If you think Satan's stupid, you got a problem already. He ain't sophisticated. Huh? Look at what he uses. He uses the good technology that's supposed to bring people together. He uses it to separate people. He gives a story that, could, that puts people against each other. He put husband against wife and wife against husband. He's a diabolical schema. But we have the protection. We're clear. God didn't leave us without protection. You know, he know, he know Satan. Satan couldn't come into existence. Satan wasn't always Satan, you know. Satan was leading the angels at one time, just didn't know he wasn't an angel. If he'd have thought a little bit, he would have realized that the angels do what they're told, and that's it. And he was giving command to them, so that should have told him something. So let us, dear believers, this time we're living in, we have to stand up. We have to be the best human beings we can be. And we got to stand up with the ammunition that God has given us, not what man has made up. Stand up with the ammunition of faith, Bill Guy. Faith without, some might say, well, prove it to me, ma'am. Well, I, not, not, you sound like the people in the book that says, show me God right here. No, Bill Guy, faith upon the proof of my own life experience, I stand upon that. Bill Guy, without all the evidence that I can explain to you, but I know there's no God but Allah. Allah. I'm the law. I know that. Imam, show me. You go to work and figure it out yourself. I have figured it out. My soul is comfort. I have accepted both my male and masculine side and known that it can't work without my feminine side too. The nest and where I need both of them in order for me to mate and remain a human being. When you lose one and you're male alone, you're insane and you kill and maim and you enjoy doing it. A man who's got a mate, he got a whole nother sensitivity. That's why in this religion of Islam, marriage is sacred. And now you know part of why it says marriage is half of your religion. Because without it, you'd be sleepwalking. You have no motivation. See, he ain't doing nothing. Man, what he want to do with nothing? Sleepwalking through life because he had not made it. Sleepwalker is a man who's alone. And God said, I didn't make you to be alone. I make you to take up the responsibility that's going to motivate you to do something. So stand up and call. As I said, I put the calls in and send my cars out to all the mothers and wives of these insane men who are just warmongers, just want war and kill and kill. I don't care what they've done to their wives. Send the wife a message from God. Send the mother a message from God. I'll never forget one of these mayors I dealt with close enough back and forth with, and just one day something was happening because I was a chaplain and I'm dealing, and he said something. He said, well, you know, I don't believe in God. I said, what's your mother's phone number? <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so I'm calling your mama on you. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah. He looked at me. He don't bother me. Listen, man, something wrong with you. you know I mean, uh, you know, do you at least do good works? Or maybe you just say you ain't, you ain't got there yet, but are you doing good works? And I said, well, you're doing good works. I'll give me the number anyway, just in case. I might need an emergency to call on you, man. I know your mama ain't going to go for that. What she went through to bring you into this world? Who you think she called on going through those changes? Huh? And now the world is in such a way that it tries to uh, take away 
that, 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 that pain connects the mother in such a way, as I said before, coming from the book of God, the Quran, and the life of the prophet, uh, with the explanation of Imam Muhammad, God makes the mother to love that which is in her womb that she hadn't seen it or don't know. Here's Satan again. He's going to try to take that away from her and through technology. So I'm going to show you what it is. Oh, man, come on now. Be patient. He wants to, you got to be patient. We'll show it to you. But if Satan does, he invite you. I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you right now, huh? You want it now? Come on. Play this number. Don't worry about it. I'm going to give you something. What are you going to give me? A dream. I'm going to put you to sleep. Dollar in a dream. I'm going to put you to sleep. Huh? I'm going to give you falsity. And I'm going to have you love falsity over the fact of the matter. So let us pray for the human being to stand up. That all the religious leaders, all of us who claim faith, the Abrahamic faiths, and others who have believed and what have you in the Quran, there's many other names of many other religions in the, in the Quran and in the Bible too mentioned. Let us stand up. Let us walk together. Let us demand peace. Let us demand the answer is not slaughtering human beings and such a that Satan way. Are you a devil? Yeah. I remember in concluding some time back when the Nation of Islam and they were examining us because Ahmad Elijah Muhammad had a master strategy that he was given. So what he did is use language in that revolution that everything that the oppressor, the enslaver, was uh, 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 putting forward, his hatred and everything else, he picked it up. He said, well, I'm going to reverse it. They said, we animals. They said, we are not we're a human being. He said, well, every baby born to a white man is a devil. That shocked him. Yeah, he said, every, one, every white man born, all devils. They born devils. Yeah. Then he turned around and blamed us and said, you black people made them. Man was a master strategist. We understand it now. Yes. You know, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, he made us wake up. Yes. So here he was. And then after all that there, his man hit so far and said, listen, you don't want us here? Then give us a piece of this land. Heck, we didn't build it for you anyway. Give us a piece of the land. We have our own. We don't need you. He started putting that stuff in front of them. Right. And when they put them out there, they whoa, whoa, whoa. Danger, real Robinson, danger. One of those movies I forgot a kid about, robot or somebody. You know, they got AI now, so I might as well say it. Huh? And uh, this man named Mike Wallace, a news reporter. And he said something that's right now on the same validity. He put a program that said, the hate that hate produced. Huh? Yeah. To awaken, what did you just produce? Look what you did. Look where they went to. They didn't went to now. You hated them. Now they got a program that hates you. A mirror. So what's happening over there in Palestine and Israel? That hate, that hate produced. You hated those people. You treated them like this. You backed them in those corners. You took their humanity from them. The hate that you made from your hate, you never healed. Huh? There are Jews, Muslim, Christians, and others, and we are all been blessed from all nationalities. All Jewish people are not white. And all Jewish people as an ethnic group are not God conscious. And so it is for many others. Ah, because you're God conscious, you don't pick up the same tool of your enemy and think you're going to beat him with it. You pick up the staff of Moses. Huh? You pick up the staff of Musa, Moses. You pick up the disposition in your heart of Muhammad the prophet, the prayers and peace be upon him. Yeah, you pick up the positions from Adam to Muhammad. You pick up the position of Abraham, Abraham, alayhi salam, Noah, Lot, Daniel, Ezekiel. Huh? You pick them up. You pick up a, a slingshot and a stone of truth, and you hurl it at the devil's head. He asks Allah to forgive us our errors, our mistakes, forgive us our sins. Save us from the torment of the extreme passions that this world are putting people in. Help us to be among those who believe 
and have no fear because none can cause my death or bring it any earlier or delay it. Allah is in charge of it. So we don't think about dying. We always think about living. That which I have some say so in. Death is not a concern in that sense. We're not worried about someone attacking us. We're worried about us attacking or not attaching ourselves to the right human disposition. Takbir. I close this with reading from the same surahs I read from in Hajj. To those against whom war is made, permission is given to fight because they are wronged. And verily Allah is most powerful for their aid. They are those who have been expelled from their homes in defiance of right for no cause except that they say, Our Lord is Allah. Has not Allah checked one set of people by means of another? There would surely have been pulled down monasteries, churches, synagogues, mosques, in which the name of Allah is commemorated in abundant measure. Allah will certainly aid those who aid his cause, for very Allah is full of strength, exalted in might, able to enforce his will. They are those who, if we establish them in the land, establish regular prayer and give regular charity, enduring the right and forbid wrong, with Allah rest the end and decision of all affairs. If they treat thy mission as false, so did the people before them with their prophets, the people of Noah and Ad and Ad and the Thalmud, and those of Abraham, Abraham and Lut, a lot, and the companions of the Marian people, and Musa, Moses, was rejected in the same way. But I granted respite to the unbelievers, and only after that did I punish them? But how terrible was my rejection of them? How many populations have we destroyed which were given to wrongdoing? They tumbled down on their roofs. And how many well are lying idle and neglected and castles lofty and well built? Do they not travel through the land so that their hearts and minds may thus learn wisdom, and their ears may thus learn to hear. Truly, it is not their eyes that are blind, but their hearts which are in their breasts. Yet they ask thee to hasten on the punishment, but Allah will not fail in his punishment. Verily, a day in the sight of thy Lord is like a thousand years on your reckoning. And to how many populations did I give respite which were given to wrongdoing? In the end, I punished them. To me is this decision of all. Salakallah azim. Allah speaks the truth. He comes to Salat. Allah, 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 Allah,